Have you ever pondered over the question, what would Jesus do? It's a question that has echoed through the ages, from the dusty streets of ancient Jerusalem to the bustling cities of our modern world. It's a question that invites us to reflect, to consider, and to challenge our own actions and attitudes. But why does this question matter? Why should we care about what a carpenter's son from 2,000 years ago would do in our place? The answer lies in the remarkable teachings of Jesus. Teachings that have shaped the course of human history and continue to inspire millions around the globe. You see, the teachings of Jesus are not just about theology or doctrine. They're about living a life of compassion, kindness, humility and love. They're about seeing the divine in every person we meet and treating them with the same respect and dignity that we would want for ourselves. Imagine if we lived our lives by that simple yet profound principle. Imagine if in every decision we made, in every interaction we had, we asked ourselves, what would Jesus do? How different would our world be? How different would our relationships be? How different would we be? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before we can answer the question, what would Jesus do? We need to understand what Jesus actually taught. We need to delve into the parables, the sermons, and the lessons that he left for us. We need to see the world through his eyes, to understand his perspective, and to grasp his wisdom. And that's what we're going to do. Over the next few minutes, we're going to explore the teachings of Jesus. We're going to see how they apply to our everyday lives, and how they can guide us in our decisions, our relationships, and our journey towards becoming the best version of ourselves. To answer this question, we must first delve into the teachings of Jesus. One of the most notable teachings of Jesus is the parable of the Good Samaritan. This tale, steeped in wisdom and compassion, tells of a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho who falls into the hands of robbers. Stripped of his belongings and left half dead, he lies by the roadside, desperately in need of help. Two individuals, a priest and a Levite, pass by, yet neither stops to assist him. Then comes along a Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews, let's remember, were not on the friendliest of terms. But this Samaritan, moved by empathy, goes out of his way to care for the injured man. He dresses his wounds, places him on his own animal, and takes him to an inn to recover. This Samaritan, with no obligation or expectation of reward, shows kindness to a stranger, a potential adversary even. He exemplifies love that transcends boundaries, compassion that disregards societal norms, and selflessness that seeks no return. Now, you might be wondering, what does this ancient parable have to do with our modern day lives? Well, quite a lot, actually. Each of us, in our own ways, traverse the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. We encounter people who are hurt, who are in need, who are left by the wayside. And we have a choice. We can pass by, absorbed in our own concerns, or we can stop, reach out, and extend a helping hand. The Good Samaritan's actions serve as a reminder that our neighbor is not just someone who shares our zip code or sits next to us at work. Our neighbor is anyone who needs our help, regardless of their race, religion, or status. The parable encourages us to broaden our circles of compassion, to empathize with those who are suffering, and to act with kindness, even when it's inconvenient or uncomfortable. It urges us to see beyond the label society assigns, and to recognize the shared humanity that binds us all. In essence, the Good Samaritan teaches us to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to extend help to those in need, regardless of their background or circumstance. Another profound teaching of Jesus is the Sermon on the Mount. This sermon, one of the most famous of all time, contains teachings that are as relevant today as they were over 2,000 years ago. At the heart of the Sermon on the Mount are the Beatitudes, a series of blessings that Jesus bestowed upon those who embody virtues such as humility, righteousness, and peacemaking. These virtues are not just qualities to be admired, they are guidelines for how we should strive to live our lives. Let's take a moment to delve deeper into these core teachings. Humility, the first of the Beatitudes, involves recognizing our own limitations and putting others before ourselves. It's about acknowledging that we are not the center of the universe and that everyone around us has their own struggles and triumphs. In our everyday life, we can practice humility by listening more than we speak and by treating others with the respect and understanding they deserve. Next, we have righteousness. This is about striving to do what is right and just, even when it's difficult or unpopular. It's about standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves 
and fighting against injustice wherever we see it. In our daily lives, we can uphold righteousness by being honest in our interactions, by refusing to take part in gossip or slander, and by standing up for those who are being treated unfairly. Finally, we have peacemaking. This is not just about avoiding conflict, but actively working to create peace and harmony. It's about striving to resolve disagreements in a fair and respectful manner and promoting a sense of unity and cooperation. In our everyday life, we can be peacemakers by choosing our words carefully, by seeking to understand others before making judgments, and by promoting positivity and understanding in our interactions. And so, we come to see that the teachings from the Sermon on the Mount are not just lofty ideals, but practical guidelines that we can apply in our everyday lives. The Sermon on the Mount teaches us to live a life of humility, righteousness and peace, and to treat all people with kindness and respect. So, how can we truly live the teachings of Jesus in our everyday life? It's a question that warrants a deeper dive, doesn't it? Let's explore some practical ways we can embody these teachings in our day-to-day -day existence. First, let's talk about compassion. Compassion isn't merely feeling sorry for someone. It's about understanding their pain and making a genuine effort to alleviate it. It's about seeing the homeless man on the street, not as a statistic or a societal issue, but as a fellow human in need. It's about lending a hand without expecting anything in return, and it's about carrying the burdens of others, even when our own load feels heavy. Next up is humility. In a world where self-promotion is often glorified, embracing humility can feel counterintuitive. But living a humble life doesn't mean downplaying our achievements or talents. Instead, it's about recognizing that we are part of a larger tapestry, that our successes and failures alike are not solely our own. It's about appreciating the roles others play in our journey and acknowledging our need for their support and wisdom. Finally, let's consider the promotion of peace. In a world rife with conflict, promoting peace can seem like a daunting task. But remember, peace doesn't always have to be grand gestures on a global scale. It can start with us in our homes, in our relationships, and even within ourselves. It's about fostering understanding and forgiveness and choosing love over hate even when it's hard. In the end, living the teachings of Jesus is about embodying his values of love, compassion, humility, and peace. It's about making a conscious effort to better ourselves and the world around us, one act at a time. So let's strive to live these teachings, not just in words, but through our actions. Because as they say, actions speak louder than words.